questions about homework that's already happened. So anybody have anything you want to ask? Yeah, I have a question. All right. So for the, I don't know how to say it, like L, um, here, I'll, I'll show you the worksheet. All right. The, wait, I have, a, I have a thing over my camera. Okay, uh, for this worksheet. Oh yeah, uh-huh. Okay, so um, for the pressure when it increased or decreased, mm -hmm. it didn't change on the front, but on the back it changed. So why was that? Okay, let me pull up that particular worksheet. Um, let's see here. So which side are you talking about? Was it page 82 or page 81? Um, so both of them. So on page 82, it didn't, the increase of pressure didn't change anything. All um, right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let me look, write that. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and um, I'll write out that. I'm writing on the wrong thing. Here we go. I'll write out that particular one. Let me let Savannah Ostrander, Ostrander in. Savannah? What was one more person waiting? Guys, and you may have to yell at me if somebody else shows up because once I share my screen, I don't always notice. Okay. Okay, Savannah, are you in here? Oh, I can see your, I can see you now, Simeon. Your hair looks cool. <laughs> All right, let's see. This one says uh, 12.6 kilocalories. You know, that's just another unit for heat, like kilojoules. And um, then it's, uh, we add hydrogen, gas, and iodine as a gas. And it's a reversible reaction. It goes to two moles of hydrogen iodide. Okay, so you're asking about the pressure part. Okay, remember when you add pressure, it only affects gases. So that this in this case, it doesn't matter because everything in here is a gas, right? But when you so this is one of those questions too. I was grading the um, the labs, and I ask you why do you only why do you only what what do you count when you when you add or decrease pressure, you measure, you add up the moles, but not just the moles, you add up the moles of gases only. So if you have a reaction that has gases and liquids in it, or gases and something aqueous, or gases and solids, you don't just say you add up the moles, because there's going to be moles of gases, liquids, solids, and uh, aqueous substances. You only add up the moles of gases. So it's important that you make that distinction. And then when you change pressure, Gas is the only thing that's affected because gas is the only thing that can be squished. Liquids and solids are already really close together, so you can't force them together anymore. You can only force the gases to come together. But you do have to add the moles. So if we look at this particular example, we have, let me get a different color. We have one mole of hydrogen and one mole of iodine. So that's one plus one. We have two moles of gas on this side. On the other side, we also have two moles of gas. So if I add pressure or take away pressure, they're, neat, they're, they're exactly the same amount of moles of gas on both sides, so it won't affect it. It has to be a different numbers of moles of gas on both sides for the, the pressure change to affect it. So um, let's see. On the bottom example, this is all from page 82, guys, just so you know. Page 82, the worksheet. Okay, the bottom example was this one. We had sodium hydroxide solid, and it goes to sodium, and this was aqueous, plus hydroxide, which is also aqueous, and then it had 10.6 kilocalories of heat. Okay, um, let's just talk about, well, Again, when you add pressure, you only count moles of gas. So on the this reactant side, there are zero gas. And on the product side, you only have aqueous substances, so we're also zero moles of gas. So pressure does not affect this one or this one. Pressure has no, no effect. It doesn't change anything because I can't squish those gases close together. I can't, when, and when you squish the gases close together, it's like that example where I push those sponges farther down, it increases the concentration. I can't do that here. There's, 
the exact same concentration on both sides of the, con of the reaction, so it's not going to shift it one way or the other. Does that answer your question, Clark? Yeah, okay. it does. Thank you so much. No problem. Because on page 81, and I'll just write that one. I've got to find my pen. There it is. On page 81, the reaction was um, nitrogen plus three moles of hydrogen goes to two moles of ammonia and 22.0 kilocalories. And I'm going to leave these up because I want to talk about them a little bit more. But if you count the moles of gas this time, over here we have one plus three, we have four moles of gas. There should be a little, oh, oh, there, of gas. Oh my goodness. My pen was not keeping up with me. And two moles on the other side. So increasing pressure this time, so when you increase pressure, it shifts to the side with fewer moles. So if I increase pressure for this reaction, it's going to cause it to shift this way. And if I take away the pressure, it's going to cause it to shift in the opposite direction. So increasing pressure, it always shifts to the side with fewer moles to try to compensate, to make up for the, lo the loss of room for the gases to move around in. And if I decrease the pressure, it has a lot more space, so it doesn't have to limit the number of moles of gas. It can go back up, okay? Now, the other thing to note about these, these three reactions, let me get my other, my desktop to come back up because it gives me a little light, is um, this reaction, notice that the kilocalories is over here, so this is an endothermic reaction. This reaction, the kilocalories are on the product side because this is the product side of the reactant reaction each side this is the product side product side this is exothermic and then this one is also exothermic okay we treat heat like a reactant like we can pour it in and so if I add heat to this side and I gave you some mnemonic devices add it goes to the opposite side add opposite so if I add heat over here then it's going to shift to the opposite side. And then to figure out what happens to the concentrations, and make sure you're answering the questions about that, because on this, um, the, the lab, I asked what happens to the concentrations, and people said, you know, it turned blue, or um, it shifted to the left. So that's not telling me what happens to the concentration of the molecules. So if I said, if it shifts this way, the concentration of hydrogen then is going to go down, the concentration of iodine is going to go down and the concentration of hydrogen iodide is going to go up because the side that it points to those things go up and the side that it points away from those things go down and that's true every time if it point if it points to the side where the concentrations are going to increase so if i add something it goes to the opposite side that side that it goes to the concentrations go up if I take away something, it points to this. So add opposite, remove same. So I should point to the same side. Remove same, add opposite. So if I remove something, like here, if I remove it, I'm going to give it another color. Let's see here. I'll do pink. If I take away heat, that means I'm cooling it off. So this is heat, so I cool it off, or I remove heat. I could do the same thing by removing hydrogen. Well, it's going to shift it to the same side now. So remove goes to the same. So the side that I point to then, everything goes up. And the side I point away from, everything goes down. OK? So treat heat or temperature is just like pouring something else in, a, a, a reactant in. So let's do another one. I'm gonna, this time, I'm gonna, um, I wanted to talk about this one. I put it in the um, other two videos. Uh, the answer to this one may have confused you a little bit. And the reason is we haven't talked about a lot of this, uh, this particular scenario because it's mostly having to do with solubility products. But the ones I'm going to give you on the test are not going to be like that unless you're an honors student, so you won't have to worry about that. But this is dissolving. In this, this particular example, we're dissolving something. 
We're dissolving sodium hydroxide pellets. Those are little, they're little tiny white pellets. And if I have some sodium hydroxide pellets at school, I plan to do the acid-base titration lab and just have my husband come and film me at school and I hope to show it to you. But sodium hydroxide pellets suck in water from the air. So it's one of those things that you have to be careful how you, where you open it and how it's shipped. But um, so here we're dissolving this. When we dissolve this solid, it becomes the ion. So sodium hydro, there's the um, hydroxide ion, becomes this negative ion over here and the sodium becomes a positive ion. Okay, when it reaches equilibrium, you know, then, then you end up with a saturated solution of something dissolved. So you have a container, okay? And sitting on the bottom might be those sodium hydroxide pellets. And then inside, you're gonna have some sodium and some hydroxide floating around. And when this solid is dissolving, it's becoming those ions. When you reach a equilibrium, you have a saturated solution. And remember, a saturated solution is a solution where it can, that's all it can hold. Uh, it looks like somebody's trying to come in. Hold on, let me let the person in. Um, Caleb Kenyon and Candace, sorry. Okay, so it's, it's holding all it can. And so if I add more sodium hydroxide there, more solid, it's already a saturated solution. I can't make more product. I can't make more dissolve. So it's one of the few times that adding more would not cause more of the opposite side to happen. But I'm not going to ask you a question that deals with solubility unless you're on nurse. You probably hear my dog. I don't know who she's barking at, but you know, just got to give her a second. Um, okay. So don't worry about that one. It, it, it's going to be two different answers depending on the worksheet. And then this some, a scenario like this comes up on the practice test, which you have to do. So um, but basically, the ones that you're going to have are going to be more like this with gases or with aqueous and pure liquids mixed in. OK? All right, I'm going to erase this for a minute and go on. OK. Wait, that's a question. Okay, what's your question? Is it Rachel? Yes. Okay. Those equations, they, those type of equations, they will be on the quiz today, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, we'll see those. So like, let's, let's do some pretend ones. Let's say if I have A plus B yields C plus D, okay? And I'm gonna make this one a gas and I'll put a two here and we'll make this one a pure liquid and I'll put a G here and maybe a three and make this one a solid, okay? And I'll put a four there. All right, so this could be a, 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 a pretend reaction that you have. And we're gonna, and it reaches equilibrium. Now, equilibrium is when you start with no products and then they, they increase. And then you, have, you start with some reactants and they decrease, okay? So this is the reactants. The reactants are always on the top because this, this side is concentration. And the products are always down here. And then this is time. So this is one scenario. You could also have it go like this, products and then reactants. And after a certain amount of time, they reach equilibrium where the concentrations right in this area kind of make an equal sign. That's why, okay? And that means the concentrations are no longer changing. That we have the same amount of, no matter how long you let the reaction go. Um, you should have watched the video dumping water back and forth. That would have been something normally we would have done together in class. Um, there comes a point when the water you're dumping forward is identical. Uh, it's still moving. The reactions are still happening in, happening in the forward and reverse. Remember, this is forward and this is reverse. They're still happening in the forward and reverse direction, but the concentrations don't change. All right. So you have to be able to compare these two right here and here. And I have to, I might ask you which one is forward favoring or which one is reverse favoring. And a mnemonic device for that is fishy forward. I know it sounds silly, but fishy forward. This is the forward favoring reaction. It looks like a fish tail. Can you see that? This kind of looks like the tail of a fish. So fishy forward. This is a, a reaction that favors the forward direction. 
So that means this one would favor the reverse direction. Okay, now we're gonna look at this one and see, we're gonna figure out the, the KP2 expression and maybe calculate it and talk about how to, to stress it. Okay, so first let's do stressing it. Um, I want a darker blue than that, okay. Let's say I add some C. That means I poured more C into the container. Well, add opposite, add opposite. It goes in the opposite direction, so it's gonna shift it to the opposite side. And then I would ask you, what happens to the concentration of D and A and B? Well, the side that I point to, everything goes up. The concentration of A would increase, the concentration of B would increase. The concentration of D would decrease. Because since I'm, it's shifting to the opposite side, D is being used with C to create more A and B. So add goes to the opposite side. Okay, let's talk about the reverse situation. What if I remove some B? So when you remove something, it shifts to the same side. Add goes to the opposite side. So I remove it, it's gonna to shift to the same side as the B. So, okay, I'm pointing it in. So what happens then to concentration of A? I'm pointing to the side where A is, so what happens to the concentration of A? Decrease. Okay, so the side you point to, right here, the side that I point to, it, you always point to the side that's going to increase. So the side you point to increases. So this is going to go up. A's concentration will go up. C and D's concentrations will go down. Okay, because C and D- You were removing C? Huh? And you were removing C? You're not removing C. Here I'm removing, here I, this is what I was doing. I was removing B. Okay. And so when I remove B, it points to the same side. So it points to the side where B is on. And whatever side I point to, everything on that side goes up and the opposite side goes down. And that's why C and D are now being used to try to recreate some B. Because I keep taking B out and so C and D try to fill that hole. And since they're, try they're falling apart to fill up B, they're also making more A. Okay, let's try another one. Same reaction. This time I am going to um, add A. All right, add, it goes to the opposite side. So it's gonna to shift to the opposite side away from A. So on the side that it turns away from, what happens to the concentration of B? What would it do? It's go down. Goes down. The side I point to, what constant happens to the concentrations of C and D? What happens, Rachel? What do you think? I think it's up. That's right. They but they goes up. C and D go up. So that's 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 all this is. Add move goes to the opposite side. Remove goes to the same side. The side I point to, the other things go up. The side I point away from, the things go down. Now, when I ask these questions, I won't ask you about the one that I manipulate. I will ask you about the other ones. How does it affect everything else in the reaction? We'll do one more. Um, okay, I'm going to remove some C. Okay, I'm removing this. So remove, it points to the same side. So there's remove, it's removed, so I'm gonna have to point to the same size of thing that I removed. You understand that? Anybody? Does everybody understand that? Rebecca, you got that one? Yes. All right. I, I remove it. I point to the same side. Now, the sides that I point to, what happened to the other things that I point that on that same side? They all go up. So this one, I took it out. So I'm not going to ask you about C. But what happens to D? It will go up because I'm pointing to the side where D is. What happens to A and B? And since I'm not pointing to, the, to their side anymore, their concentrations are going to go down because A and B are being used up to create more D. And they're also trying to fill in the hole that C is making. I keep taking C out, 
So it keeps trying to make more seed and go in that spot. Okay, so that's stressing the system. And you treat, you know, heat the same way. All right. Does anybody have a question about this stressing the system part before we do the uh, calculate the KEQ and um, I mean, figure out the expression and do a calculation? I have questions on shifting. Okay. When you take stuff away, you add stuff in, which side is the equation going to shift to? Okay. Let's, let me, um, I'm going to erase this and start like I'm running out of room. So I'm going to erase it. And I haven't figured out how to get my, once I erase it, to get my pencil back for some reason. So uh, I'm going to clear my picture and write another one. All right, so let's do another one. Um, 3A solid plus 4B gas yields uh, 2C pure liquid plus uh, 2D gas. Okay, now you're saying removing, right? Remember the mnemonic devices one more time. If you add something, it goes to the opposite side. If I remove something, it shifts to the same side. Okay. My battery's running low. Let me get my charger pl plugged in. There we go. Um, okay, so I'm going to remove something. Let's re which I'm going to remove some B. I'm going to remove B. So I'll have a down arrow because I'm removing it, okay? Removing it, I'm going to point to the same side. Okay, so I'm going to point to the same side as what I removed. You follow me on that part? I think, Rachel, you asked the question? Are you there? Yes. Okay. Do you follow me on that part? Yep. All right. So now the side that now once you figure out which side to point to, that's all you need as far as figuring out the concentrations. The side that I'm pointing to, the other concentrations are going to go up. The side I'm pointing away from, these concentrations are going to go down. Okay. That's, that's all it is. Once you know which side to point to, the side you point to, the concentrations go up. The side you point away from, the concentrations go down. All right, does that help? Do you understand what I said? So with the equilibrium shift to the right, since the no, reactants so this, this is the equilibrium shift. The arrow change is this right here is the equilibrium shift. The equilibrium oh. would shift to the left. Okay. Okay. So when you're figuring out the arrow, that's the equilibrium shift. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have a question about this one? Or a question about adding or removing? All right. I'm going to go on with an example on expression. So. Let's figure out the KEQ expression, which is just the formula, okay? An expression is the formula. It's not the value, which is a number. So the expression is always the, the, the concentration of the products raised to some power over the concentration of the reactants raised to some power. So remember that this is the product side and this is the reactant side. So what I do here is I put the concentration of C and it's gonna be raised to the power of the coefficient times the concentration of D and it's gonna be raised to the power of its coefficient divided by, now most, notice this guys, it's a, it's a multiplication problem here. It's not adding, adding is only in the reaction. So we're multiplying these guys. All right, divided by the concentration of the product, A, and it's going to be raised to the coefficient of 3, and B, and it's going to be raised to the coefficient, the exponent is the 4, just like the coefficient. Now, this is not the final answer. 
this is just the beginning. Then you have to simplify it. When you simplify, you need to remember a couple of things. If it's a solid or a pure liquid, something with an L beside it, the concentration value is the number one. So I go back and evaluate. A is a solid. So where A is, I get rid of this and put the number one in that spot. B is a gas, so that stays. C is a pure liquid. So wherever C is, I put the number one in that spot. D is a gas. So the simplified expression, and I always ask you for the simplified expression, is going to be the concentration of D squared over the concentration of B to the fourth power. That is the simplified expression. Do we need to have the brackets in the simplified expression? Is that required? The brackets are required because that this bracket, this means concentration. Okay, that's, it's a, um, the brackets mean what is the concentration. So you must have the brackets. Okay. So if you go to type it in to the computer, which you'll have to do, you'll, you can type in a bracket. And so in this case, you might say up carrot two, and then you could put, oh, I'm gonna, my daughter's calling. She's just going to have to wait. And you have to put um, divided by concentration of B up carrot four. You know, I will be able to interpret that. Plus, you have to scan your work, and your parents have to email it to me. Do not put it on Google Classroom. Okay, so if we can't exactly get it how we want it to look on the, on the computer, you'll look at our work to make sure we have it correct? Yes. Okay, yes, good. Try your, best to very worried about try your best to type it in correctly. Um, so if we do everything on scratch paper, is it okay to take a picture of that scratch paper and send it to you, or is that not okay? No, you, I need to have, yeah, you can do it on scratch paper. Your parents have to send it to me, not you. Um, it has to come through their email address, not yours. And Does it need their signature at the top? Yes, because, um, and, I don't, and I want them to take your scratch words from you. I'm trying to um, keep us, you know, honest, basically. Um, Google Classroom is, you can share Google Classroom with people too easily. I mean, I know that we, there's always a way, but we're trying to be, do the best we can to be honest. Okay, so this is the expression right here, this one right here. This is and you might have to type it in looking like this. Now, if I ask you for the value, if I say calculate the value of the equilibrium constant, the value, the value is a number. So I'd have to give you some concentration numbers. And so let's me give you some here. Let's say that this was a 1.0 molar, this is 2.0 molar, 3.0, and 4.0. All right, so you, you take the expression, you say the KEQ is equal to D squared over the concentration of B to the fourth. So I only then need to worry about D and B. It does not matter what A was. It doesn't matter at all. And it does not matter what C was at all. I only need the D value, which is four. So I put four over here and I have to square it. And the B value, which was two. So I put 2.0 over here and I have to do the fourth power and then I solve it. So I'm gonna do that right now. The um, four squared, which is 16, divided by two to the fourth, and which is also 16, two times two times, is four times two is eight, times two is 16. That's quite unusual that I managed that. So my number is 16 over 16, which equals the number one. This is one of those times when the equilibrium constant is equal to the number one. Um, and normally this is not gonna happen. Um, what if, normally you might have the equilibrium constant equal to 1.5 or the equilibrium constant is equal to one times 10 to the minus six. Um, notice that none of these have a unit, no unit. Equilibrium constants do not have a unit because they're really just, um, ratios and ratios don't have units do six picks count for this yeah okay because uh because it's 16 but then it only equals one yeah six is 1.0 okay now if the equilibrium constant is greater than the number one then you 
then notice that, notice that, let me write that again. If the equilibrium constant is greater than the number one, like here, 1.5 is greater than the number one, then just draw a line. It shifts from left to right. This is a forward favoring reaction, forward favoring. If the equilibrium constant is less than the number one, draw an arrow, it's a reverse favoring reaction. It shifts from right to left, okay? And then the forward favoring reaction would be the one where it looks like a fish tail, fishy forward. The reverse favoring reaction of one that looks, looks more like this. It doesn't look like a fish tail. That's a really bad picture, but it comes down that way. All right, <clears throat> looks like I've got somebody trying to get it. Rachel must have got kicked out by accident. Oh no. Okay. Do you guys have any more questions? Um, I can answer a specific homework question or um, review another thing. There's extra credit for this test. Make sure you you know spend time doing that. Uh, the test is Wednesday. You have to do the test on Wednesday. Um, today you have to do the quiz and after today, tomorrow morning I'll get up early, make sure everybody's done their quizzes and submitted their work and then I'll make a common error video and submit and put that up for you. Um, it'll be optional but you can watch and see if you, know, if you think you missed something, you can look at it. And I'll make it so you can skip around and see what you might have missed. Will you do one of these um, tomorrow or before the test on Wednesday if we have any questions from say like the homework assignment for Tuesday? Sure, yeah. Um, if you need me to do one on Wednesday morning, um, I just need you to send me an email and say, hey, okay. and then I'll, I'll, then I'll let everybody know I'll do one, okay? Okay, thank you. No problem. Right. Anybody else have questions? Candace, you have a, prob a question? Trying to see who I have. Right. Is the quiz going to be on the Le Chatelier's principle? Yes, yes. It's going to have. It's going to be on Le Chatelier's principle and on equilibrium constants. It's on both. Make sure you did you did the practice quiz ahead of time and graded it and corrected it. Make sure you're ready for that. You can. Um, if you want more review of the shot days principle, I mean, I've, I've covered it many times. You can go back and look at some of the previous videos. And I think there's an extra practice of the shot days principle on um, the Google Classroom and that I have not assigned. But if you just wanted to practice a little bit more before you did it, you can do that. When I have a question. When was the when was there a practice quiz assigned? Um, hold on. I don't remember that. I'll look on my computer. Let me pull it back up. Okay. This is on Friday. Was I think Friday was, 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 was part of Thursday's assignment, Ms. Kerr. Okay. Yeah, my desktop just died and I got to pull it back up. And... It was five questions long. Yeah, it wasn't super long. Okay. I, I did that. I just was not sure. Yeah. That was short so I didn't know that was the practice quiz. Is that how long is the, qu the quiz five questions? No, it's longer than that. I added a few more. Because um, part of it is adjusting for this scenario. Uh, I felt like five questions was too few because if you missed one, you know, it kills your grade. And yeah. so I added more questions, um, you know, some easy, some um, about this kind of difficulty. None of them were more difficult than what we just went over.